Good morning, I'm Sylvia Square with your first look at local news. Good morning, I'm Sylvia Square with your first look at local news. Good morning, I'm Sylvia Square with another look at your local news. These days, a distance spanning thousands of kilometers can be traveled in a matter of hours, thanks to the technology of modern aviation. That's all the time we have for news this morning. Join us later tonight for NewCap News at 6. Lloyd is digging out from its second snowfall in two days. The white stuff has piled up faster than city plows can keep up. Lloyd Minster usually sees an average of 13 centimeters of snow for the entire month of January. So far we've had over 15 centimeters and the month is only half over. The city will have to continue to work hard to keep up. Sylvia Square, Newcap News. Lakeland just had the accreditation of the kitchen and bath course renewed for another five years. The National Kitchen and Bath Association, or NKBA, gave their approval last week. It means that our students get a little bit more of an edge when it comes to kitchen and bath design. There are 42 kitchen and bath accredited schools in North America. But the Lakeline program is the only one in Canada. Something to be proud of as they go into another five years of accreditation. Sylvia Square, Newcap News. What better way to get over the winter blues than by celebrating winter itself? Best part of the carnival is probably the taffy. Definitely, definitely the taffy. Carnival is based on Mardi Gras. It's a tradition of riotous partying leading up to Lent. Based on the amount of sugar and energy here today, these kids are well on the way to living up to the tradition. Sylvia Square, New Cap News. We don't always get the chance to talk about Canada's diversity, but this week's Rotary Club luncheon took on common misconceptions about Islam. Turns out Islam has a deep respect for Western religion. Alberta's becoming more diverse every day. Our fast-paced world often means we don't have time to learn about each other. But today's talk went a long way to creating both understanding and connection. Sylvia Square, New Cap News. Currently, most municipalities have their own 911 call center. Emergency calls are all routed through one depot. Ambulance, fire and rescue are then dispatched locally. Alberta's new system will consolidate ambulance dispatch from 30 centers down to nine. The proposal has members of the East Central 911 Call Centre Society concerned about service for the area. It appears the proposal means at least a 70% drop in the total number of call centres, probably more. Just how this will affect service remains to be seen. Sylvia Square, Newcap News. Over 500 billion plastic bags are consumed worldwide every year. Many people don't give it a second thought, but Vermillion would like to change those numbers. Plastic bags leave an environmental footprint. Less than 1% of them ever get recycled. They're lightweight, so they can easily blow around, spreading pollution beyond city limits. Sylvia Square. Sylvia Square. Sylvia Square. New Cap News. It's another biting cold day on the prairies. Wind chill warnings keep most people inside. But some jobs must be done outside. Construction work carries on despite extreme weather. Does it ever stop? I leave it up to the individual person. If they find it's too cold for them, and you can't force them to work in this kind of temperature. So. Alberta Occupational Health and Safety says that exposure to cold conditions affects a worker's ability to function normally. Two factors come into play. Heavy clothing and the body's physical response to low temperature. The risks of working in extreme cold include reduced dexterity in hands and feet, reduced coordination, and reduced decision-making ability. Recommended practices include taking frequent breaks indoors, but it seems experience is the best protection. Oh, I just yeah. work hard, just stay warm. Okay. It's right. not too bad. We come dressed for the situation, so yeah. we're okay that way. I like cold, but... Yeah. Today's temperature's locked in at minus 28. With the wind chill, that's minus 42. At these levels, exposed flesh can freeze in 10 minutes. But for these hardy souls, it's just another day on the job. Sylvia Square, New Cap News. Wendy Strang knows about loss and suffering caused by impaired driving. Twelve years ago, a drunk driver cut her off. She saw him stop, so she did not call police. What happened next changed her life forever. One hour later, uh, my mother was on the road with my daughter and uh, this, uh, this 
the same individual uh, had hit them head on. Killing my mother and critically injuring my daughter. Stories like Wendy's motivate Mad to hold vigils like this one. I hope some comfort for them. It, it really is heartbreaking to understand that people are still being killed by impaired drivers. Um, I believe that education is key with it and that people are really starting to pay attention to it and they're starting to realize that it's not right, it's not fair, and it can be stopped. Survivors do offer each other comfort. Many find their faith grows deeper as they remember their loved ones. We'll understand it all by and by. I mean, the Lord so blessed us. He really did. And they're his children. Who are we to say how long they get to stay with us? You know? And, and we had those 20 wonderful years. And I just, and I know the first person I see when I get over there, she said, come on, Dad. <laughs> she'll be there. Yep, she'll be there. Sunday, January 11th, is National Zero Tolerance Day. Matt has teamed up with snowmobile groups to try and prevent any further tragedies. But for now, the Lloyd chapter remembers those who have suffered and lost due to impaired driving. They offer one final plea. Please don't drink and drive. And if you do see somebody who's been uh, drinking and driving, please call 911 immediately. Don't hesitate. Sylvia Square, Newcap News. What better way to get over the winter blues than by celebrating winter itself? Ah! Rendell Park School did just that with their winter carnival. It's a celebration of French culture within our school community and celebration of our French program and we have a number of activities for the kids to enjoy that are based on the Carnival de Quebec. Well, we'd like to have a, an emphasis on French within our school. We believe in our French program and this is a great way to celebrate French. The students certainly agree. Je pense que le carnaval c'est une bonne expérience pour tous les enfants, pour qu'ils savent toute la culture du Québec et le français, tout ça. Well, there's a lot of anticipation over carnaval. They get very excited and we spend a lot of time working up to this day. So with the arrival of Bonhomme, the kids are very lively and, and excited the whole day through. Kids piled onto a hay wagon for a ride around town. Others slogged uphill in modern day snowshoes. Some pretended to be dogs as they pulled their friends on the dog sled route. Stepping inside to warm up, the kids munched on beaver tails, a deep-fried pastry rolled in sugar and cinnamon. Then it was back outside for a game of schlocky, a combination of slush and hockey. Kids enjoyed the learning and the fun. It teaches some of us about the about language, about how it is in France, about this time of year. But I personally like that there's all the games. The best part of Carnival is probably the sleigh rides. And hot chocolate. Played all the games too. But the most popular spot was the taffy stand. The best part of the carnival is probably the taffy. Definitely, definitely the taffy. I love the taffy. I love taffy. Carnival is based on Mardi Gras. It's a tradition of riotous partying leading up to Lent. Based on the amount of sugar and energy here today, these kids are well on the way to living up to the tradition. Sylvia Square, New Cap News. Bye,